As gamers, we have a lot of options for where we play our games. You can be a Sony pony or an Xbox or a Nintendo Switcher. Sure, let's go with that. But we all know PC rules them all. You get to play early access games, have fun with mods, and the best reason, of course, is the Steam Summer Sale. As a lifelong Sony pony, I wasn't sure owning a PC would be for me until I realized how great it can be for co-op gaming. So we decided to sit down and look at the best co-op games on Steam. We did a bunch of research looking at the best rated games, best selling games, and of course, leveraging our own experience. All of the games on this list were released on PC first, save for one that we're really looking at as more of a PC mod, but more on that later, and be sure to stick around for some honorable mentions too. That's enough preamble though, here's our top 10 co-op games on Steam. If you haven't played the Outlast Trials yet, then don't be surprised it's managed to make our top 10. It's not just Outlast 3 with the second player slaps into the campaign. This is a complete transformation of the series into a well thought out cooperative experience where you and your squad are tasked to complete increasingly difficult missions in the name of escaping with a shred of your humanity and dignity. Warning, both of which will be left yeah, behind. I'm just gonna get in there. Okay. We're at, we're at. Oh god, no, let me in, Gooseberry! Let me in! Oh, Jeez, man, dude, she got crazy. me like in the tube. That was awful. There are two reasons the team at Red Barrel successfully managed this transition. One, you have a few upgrade paths and abilities you can use to differentiate yourself on a team. For instance, I had a heal I could use to heal my teammates, while Gabe had the ability to mark our enemies for us by seeing through walls. Two, they made the objectives extremely cooperative, forcing you to communicate on your position, the enemy's position, your timing for completing something, etc. It all comes together surprisingly well and it made even me, a big scaredy cat, a believer and looking forward to any and all additions as the game continues to grow. So spooky co-op games are all the rage lately, with titles like last year's Lethal Company or the latest viral hit Content Warning taking over the Steam charts. But there's one title that really paved the way for this, which is to say Phasmophobia walks so Content Warning could run. This is a Steam classic, and even though it can be a little janky at times, the novelty of ghost hunting with your friends never really gets old. One thing Phasmophobia nails is giving everyone in your camera crew a role. Whether you're walking around with the EMF reader or the dots projector, everyone plays a crucial part in deciphering what kind of ghostly presence you're facing. You really have to rely on your friends in this game to like pay attention to all the signs and tells of a ghost, lest you run headfirst into a ghost of it in the living room and die. Unlike Content Warning, this game can be pretty scary actually, but it's also pretty hilarious. It's very easy for all sorts of shenanigans to be had. So if you've yet to check out this cult classic, here's your sign to finally hop in. You ever just play a game and feel like, dang, that's a game. Like capital G video game. That feeling is what you get when you play Risk of Rain 2. We played this way back when it got ported to the Switch in 2020, but before Nintendo got a hold of it, it was exclusive to PC, so it deserves a spot on this list. It's a roguelite that puts the emphasis on increasingly crazy builds as you last as long as you can. In between that chaos, you have hero characters with specific abilities and loadouts to play with and tailor your team towards. Plus, the game boasts fun enemy variety, interesting bosses, and tons of secrets to unlock and find. The fact that it's still receiving pretty large updates four years later, yes, that's right, the Seekers of the Storm DLC is still on the way, and they even just announced a free update that adds the Dead Cells protagonist, among other things, it's a real testament to how beloved this game is, 100% worth an addition to your Steam library. Sons of the Forest just recently hit 1.0 in late February, and I have no trouble in saying it is the best pure survival co-op game on the market. After numerous updates, the island has never been more immersive to explore. Seriously, just look at how good this game looks, and that's just through a decent PC rig. I can't imagine how much better this could look with a pro rig at like max settings. Best part is this plays just as well as it looks. Building a base, exploring caves, hang gliding through the map is all a ton of fun, especially in co-op. This may not have the deepest co-op mechanics, but when you're surrounded by cannibals at night, you'll be pretty glad you're not alone in taking them on. Same can be said for gathering food, protecting your boy Kelvin, and especially solving the mysteries of the island. It is all just really good with friends. There's really no better time to play Sons of the Forest, especially if you were an early access player, it's very much worth returning to. 
Outside of making sure these games first came to PC, our thought process on creating this list was emphasizing the games that are popular specifically on Steam as opposed to consoles. Perhaps Deep Rock Galactic is a perfect example of that sentiment. It highlights exactly what a good PC co-op game needs, a great sense of humor. Dropping a big rock and stone before a mission, getting drunk and dancing with your boys in between, and racing back to your pod and leaving no man behind, that's the fun of Deep Rock Galactic. But on top of that, it has a great mission structure and class system that helps differentiate your team and split up roles so you're forced to communicate and work together. Plus, the team has kept the game updated for years now, and you could easily lose hundreds of hours in the mines. If you haven't tried Deep Rock Galactic with the gang yet, you're missing out. Prior to its early access launch, Enshrouded was the most played and wishlisted demo at last year's Steam Netfest, so it should come as no surprise that it's an absolute banger. Which is saying a lot for an early access game with only one update under its belt. If you ever play a co-op game but think, man, I wish it had this or that, Enshrouded is the game you want. It truly has it all. Base building, dungeons, a grappling hook, RPG elements, a glider, a voxel building system, and so much more. When it comes to early access games, you always have to ask yourself if it's worth playing now or waiting till it's full launch, but somehow Enshrouded manages to hit that perfect sweet spot in my opinion. There's enough content for you and your group to go through between doing quests and exploring the open world, but we're also very excited to come back and see it in its full glory when it gets that big 1.0 update. Point being, Enshrouded is the bomb and you should be playing it now or at the very least adding it to your wishlist for later. It's been a minute since we last got to talk about Divinity Original Sin 2 in a video, so give me a minute to warm up here. Yeah, let's do this. Divinity Original Sin 2 is one of the best co-op games of all time, full stop. The only reason it isn't higher on this list is because A, it's a good 7 years old now, and B, its younger sibling has become the star of the show to some degree. But even with that being true, if you want a deep RPG to enjoy with your friends for a solid 100 hours, you cannot go wrong here. What still sticks out years after our campaign finished was all the decisions we had to make as a group to get to the end of our campaign feeling like the heroes and not the villains. It made every session a delight. When you couple that with the four player online co-op, two player local co-op, and combo co-op combining the both, it's an easy recommendation to make all these years later. V Rising, an action RPG with survival and open world elements, is the game that convinces us that early access can be well worth your time. It may not look like much, but there's a ton going on in this package. The gameplay loop of hunting at night and crafting during the day brought us through dozens of hours of playtime when we first started. It takes a lot to keep a big castle running, so it's super helpful to enlist your buds for this one, especially since it makes the whole crafting loop go way faster. This game also has great progression tied to killing bosses in the game world and they always reward you with unique abilities for your class. And since everyone can craft their own unique vampires, it meant we all had our roles to play in combat. Which let me just say, combat in this game is on a league of its own. Combat in survival games is often just kinda there, but V Rising bucks the trend and proves you can have awesome survival systems, crafting, and great combat. The 1.0 update is quickly approaching on May 8th, so take our word for it and check out V Rising. Whenever we talk about Elden Ring, it feels like we have to add an asterisk. Is this one of my favorite games I have ever played, period? Yes, it 100% is. But is it also a largely flawed cooperative experience? Also, yes. That's why it feels great that on PC we get to add an additional asterisk, one that says, but if you play with the co-op mod, you're basically getting one of the best cooperative experiences of all time. No need to worry about invisible gates, being sent home between every death and victory, or struggling to do every boss twice because of shared progression. It literally fixes every woe we experience during our playthrough and does it seamlessly. Seriously, if you've used this mod and had a good experience, give this man a donation. With that mod in mind, you've got one of the best RPGs and open worlds to explore with your friends exclusively on PC. Have fun. Finally, we've arrived at our number one pick for best co-op game on Steam, and shocker, it's Baldur's Gate 3. If you've played this game of the year winner, then you're not surprised to see it as the number one spot. But for those yet to get rejected by Shadowheart in front of your boys, here's a couple reasons why Baldur's Gate 3 rules. A lot of games like to claim that whole you can do anything thing, but Baldur's Gate 3 says that with his whole chest. You really can do anything, and it makes for some really entertaining 
entertaining co-op gameplay. Whether it's convincing some orcs to join your cause or Spartan kicking a legit boss off a bridge, this game offers limitless freedom. As a big fan of D&D, this game nails character creation in a way that really goes beyond most games. You're offered so many options in crafting your character and it allows you to play a super unique role in your party. A lot of what we loved about Divinity is just flat out better in this game, though you should still check out Divinity. But like its older brother, Boulder Skate 3 is a game you remember for all those unique decisions you made in your co-op campaign. It has that magic in that you know other people played this game and likely follow some similar paths through it, but your campaign still feels unlike anyone else's. And yeah, there's just something special about experiencing 80 hours of that with your friends. Now that we're out of the top 10 and into honorable mention, Gabe and I figured we'd talk about our favorite Steam titles that weren't originally or solely released on Steam, but can be played there. And trust me, these titles are worth playing. Helldivers 2 may be a PlayStation exclusive, and yes, it didn't launch well on Steam with server issues for weeks, but man, can you think of a more PC-feeling PC game? Sure, the moment-to-moment -moment action is great, but what we really loved about Helldivers is the sense of humor and sense of community. Hugging your boy as a nuclear explosion lights the horizon is just as emotional as learning Malevolence Creek was lost to the cursed automatons. It's a live service game in the sense that it actually feels alive, and that's why it's not only one of the best, but also the most popular games on Steam right now. Warhammer 40k Darktide was poised to be a true co-op hit at launch, if it wasn't for its very buggy state and some underbaked systems. It was unfortunate because the game really had it where it counts. The gameplay is among the most exhilarating and satisfying we've ever experienced. The soundtrack, whew, the soundtrack is truly unmatched. Thankfully, over the last year and a half, the team have pushed countless bug fixes and overhauled plenty of aspects of the game. So now everyone can see how good this game can be, especially in co-op. I could talk about the classes and such, but really it's rather simple. Slaughtering hordes of enemies with your friends while the hardest metal track plays in the background is just a total blast. With the big passive redemption update hitting later this month, there's really no reason to not check out Warhammer 40k Darktide. Remnant 2 is a game that will grace many people's favorite co-op game list, and rightfully so. It takes everything we love about the original and doubles down on them. Better classes, guns, bosses, and worlds to explore, with the signature replayability that no one can quite compete with like Remnant can. It punches way above its weight and is best played with a couple friends, maxing out those Unreal Engine 5 visuals like only the best PCs can. You really thought we weren't going to mention it, did you? But no, we're really here to remind you for the 200th time that It Takes Two is a co-op masterpiece. I'm not gonna rehash the whole thing. If you've played it, you know how amazing of an experience it is. And if you haven't played it, well, first off, what are you waiting for? And secondly, come on, you already know it's incredible and you really owe it to yourself to play it. So go like this video, leave a comment, and go get the game on Steam. You can thank us later. And there you have it, tons of amazing co-op games to add to your list. We know that not every game you wanted was covered because we're just two dudes playing games. We can't cover and play them all. So let us know in the comments which games we need to add to our playlist. And if you're really passionate about it, check out our Patreon. Over there we let our higher tiers vote on backlog games every year and some of our videos, including this one. They voted for us to knock out this list as our next list video. So shout out to our patrons for keeping us going and we'll catch everyone else next time on The Co-op Bros.